I just finished reading the book Abduction, Human Encounters with Aliens by Dr. John Mack. He's a Harvard psychiatrist who dedicated a large portion of his career investigating alleged alien abductions. After I had worked with 40 or 50 of these individuals, uh, I discovered to my amazement that there simply was no psychiatric explanation of this, that something real had happened to them. Dr. John and, uh, Mack is professor of psychiatry at the Harvard How Medical School. Professor Mack has spent the last few years uh, listening to some people with very strange stories. Else. I never really focused on so-called alien abductions because they could easily be explained by sleep paralysis, night terrors, and other psychological phenomena. But that all changed after hearing about the Ariel School UFO sighting. Essentially, in 1994, a group of 60 school kids in Zimbabwe reported interacting with what we would call typical gray aliens. They drew what they allegedly saw and were later interviewed by Dr. Mack. It seemed that he was looking at all of us. What, was that, what did it feel like when he was looking at you? I felt scared. It, it felt scared? What was scary about it? Well, felt scared because I've never seen such a person like that before. And I saw this person and it had big eyes that's all i saw about it big eyes they had short legs and quite a long top mm -hmm. with a big head and eyes that are, are bigger than ours Did, how much bigger than ours four or five times the size four or five times the size of ours what really shocked me is they all kept the same story to this day these people now have careers and reputations to maintain but with no exception, through multiple interviews, they swear it did in fact happen the way they described it. I stand by what I saw. There was no reason for any of us to make that up. I've not spoken to anybody about it. Not because I'm not proud of it, but because I don't want the, the stigma. So it's something that I've had to deal with for 19 and a half years. This is why I gave the book a chance. And while I remain skeptical of the many accounts Dr. Mack listed in his work, because of the aerial school sighting, I can't ignore them. So here's my speculative take on who gets abducted, how are the aliens able to avoid getting caught, and what their end goal is. But when we were looking at the brains of these individuals, we noticed something right in the center of the basal ganglia uh, in many of these individuals that at first we thought was damage. It was basically uh, an enriched patch of MRI dense uh, neurons that we thought was damage, and it, but then it was showing up in everybody and then we looked and they said, oh, it's actually not. The other readings on these MRIs show that actually that's living tissue. Um, that's actually in the head of the caudate and the patamen. Um, and at the time, and I remember even asking a good friend of mine uh, at Stanford who is a um, psychiatrist, what does the basal ganglia do? He said, oh, the basal ganglia is just about uh, movement and nerve and motor control. And I said, well, that's odd because, uh, you know, these other papers that we were reading at the time started to suggest that it was involved with uh, higher intelligence and is actually downstream of the executive function uh, and involved with intuition and planning. And if you think about it, if you're gonna have motor control, which is centralized in one place, motor control requires knowledge of the environment. What I think we found was a form of higher functioning and processing. So what we then looked at, and this was the most fascinating part of it, we, we looked then at individuals in the families of those uh, let's say the index case individuals. And we found that it was actually in families. Hmm. And more so, this is the most fascinating part. We've probably looked now at about 200 just random cases that you can download off of databases online. You don't see this higher connectivity. You only find it in what Kit Green would have called or has called higher functioning individuals. The fact that members of the same families are targeted is a recurring theme in John Mack's book. We just found a UFO. Mom, what else is it? There's not even any more of them. Oh my God, it's just... Is there... Oh my God. 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 Oh my
Is it on the Elon Musk thing? Natalie, satellites don't uh, skip Move about that like that. I don't like it. I'm, I'm in awe. I swear to God, I'm I've never seen anything like joking. it. I've never seen anything don't like that. Don't ever shut up. Why? No way, that is going fast. That is no drone. Stop, don't go over there, don't leave. Don't leave, no. A UFO, I'm not joking, it literally came out of nowhere. It's aliens, I believe in aliens. I believe in aliens more than God. Oh, Let's talk about home security from Google, the easy way to keep your home safe and check on it from anywhere. This is Nest Doorbell, an intelligent battery-powered doorbell with a built-in camera. This is the battery-powered Nest Cam. With all the security cameras around the world, you would think some alien abduction would have been captured on video. Yet the chances of advanced extraterrestrial beings who have undergone thousands or even millions of years of evolution beyond humans being captured using such rudimentary equipment are extremely slim. But I dared ask the question, how? James Woolsey headed the Central Intelligence Agency as Director of Central Intelligence during Clinton's administration. He came public with an otherworldly anecdote that could give us a hint. Can I ask you to clarify, were you using an analogy or were you being serious that you had a friend that had an aircraft of 40,000 feet that mysteriously stopped? I've talked to someone whom I respect who says that there was some event in which a, 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 an aircraft was paused. Uh, and basically that's all I know about that. Wow. I mean, you're, you're kind of blowing my mind there. I really didn't expect that type of a story. Uh, and I appreciate you sharing that. I've often wondered if aliens are manipulating time to hide themselves. Just imagine if you could take a three hour procedure and shrink it into five minutes. The whole event would probably look like a blur to any outside human observer. It's also speculated that non-human intelligence bend gravity to drag their crafts forward. Since gravity and time are closely related in physics, it could give us a clue on how they can stay stealthy. Furthermore, in the aerial school sighting, and in many of the cases reported by John Mack, the beings are described as being floaty. He moved kind of strangely, I'd, I'd say. Almost like a, say a very graceful sort of moment. You know, not like you're stumbling around or anything. You don't, like sort of like glided from when, while he was walking. There wasn't any gravitational pull. It was a very fluid. So when he was moving, it was very fluid and flowy, and it wasn't kind of jerky or yeah. The strange thing was it was running in slow motion, <laughs> as if you would watch a replay in a football match. It was running in slow motion diagonally down the field and then suddenly it would reappear in the corner where it started and do the same thing and then it would reappear and do the same thing these aliens are almost always described as small child-sized creatures with gray skin and big black eyes that are extremely hypnotizing and all-knowing Abductees often chose not to look directly into the eyes because they seem to be able to project ideas and thoughts. The beings will usually take the person inside a craft where medical, like procedures, take place. The short beings are almost always in the presence of a taller figure, often referred to as the leader. The leaders usually move more gracefully and are the ones to calm the abductees. She looked kind of feminine looking and had fingers, regular fingers, and I'll come over and pinch me on side the cheek. And then she took her finger and run down my throat and got behind that little thing that hangs down back there and tried to come up in my nasal cavity. And that was when it started hurting and I started choking and I got scared. And uh, she just kind of telepathically told me, you know, don't be afraid, we're not gonna hurt you. Most of the procedures done by the aliens seem to be related to artificial insemination in the hopes of creating a hybrid between them and us. They put 
like a jock strap on you of some sort with a tube attached to it and it runs to a machine and they somehow extract sperm. I don't know how they do it. And I found myself in this room and I was lying on this stretcher and this being, I, I don't even know how to say this. He started to put my legs apart. Most times I just know it's happening. They put my vantage point on a table with my legs in the air. And then the next thing that followed after that was that my legs were being spread apart. And then I, I really started to panic. And then the next thing I felt after that was this most incredible pain that I've ever felt in my life. And that felt like a bullet shot up into my uterus and hit the top of my uterus. And this female brought a baby and, and she sort of handed him to me. And I instantly said, I, I, uh, this baby is mine, I know. Another characteristic of the majority of encounters is a message about the environment. Telepathic communication. They were trying to communicate, trying to tell us something. It was something to do with the environment. I kept getting these thoughts and ideas in my mind of technology. Technology is not helping, technology is bad. And we're going down a wrong path and we have to start recognizing that what we're doing is detrimental and we need to make changes and I don't know what to do with that or without being specific the beings allude to the fact that we're heading towards many possible catastrophic events in the book one abductee even describes how after the human population drops they are planning to repopulate the earth with a new version of us more in tune with our environment it got me wondering did they already do this in fact, according to the genetic bottleneck theory between 50,000 and 100,000 years ago, human populations sharply decreased between 3,000 to 10,000. The most popular explanation behind the theory is concerning a volcanic eruption. This is all speculation, but what if both hypotheses were true? As in, the human population was brought close to zero and the aliens came to reintroduce a slightly more advanced version of us. It really makes you wonder what the military knows about the abduction phenomenon, since it's been rumored that the U.S. were involved in the recovery of crashed non-human intelligence vehicles around the world. Here's the story of Terry Lovelace. He was on active duty in the U.S. Air Force from 1973 to 1979 and wrote a book about his own abduction experience. Early evening, uh, 9 o'clock-ish, we are on these air mattresses and we have a campfire in between us. I noticed that the sounds of the forest, the crickets, the tree frogs, all the stuff that makes noise in the forest at night, uh, stopped. And a few minutes after that, my friend says, hey, Terry, were those lights there before? And on the Western horizon, there was a triangle of three little stars. And we thought maybe it's some kind of aircraft. Uh, we were familiar with aircraft. We didn't know any kind of aircraft that had that triangular configuration of lights and it came in over the forest and we could see the, the treetops illuminate uh, with this dark shadow in between and I looked out over the meadow and I saw two things this triangle that had been 3,000 feet over our heads just some hours earlier has descended and is now 30 feet over the top of the meadow uh, the second thing that I saw was what I thought, thought to be a dozen, maybe 15 kids. And I'm like, Toby, man, what are these kids doing out here in the middle of the night, in the middle of nowhere? And then Toby said in a very serious tone, look at them again, Terry, they're not human beings. And he says, don't you remember? They took us inside that thing and they hurt us. And I wanted to cry. I was just overwhelmed. Uh, because I had a mental flash of being inside the thing. You're sitting inside and, and you just, well, in the book you describe you're, you're pinched between people. And they're kind of, I, I visualized it based on your description that you were sitting in a row of people. You couldn't turn your head, but you could move, move your eyes around. Just like us, they were all uh, uh, nude, all holding their clothing in their arms like this. And all of them rolling their eyes all over the place and all of them crying. And uh, it was a mixed bag of uh, men, women, and children. Is that when you see 
uniformed service officers? So about seven guys and a woman. Uh, could have been six, about, but about that. Um, walked across our field of view, would not look at us. Of course, we had no way to communicate with them. Never heard them speak, never heard them say a word. Um, they wore tan colored flight suits and they had round orange patches on the shoulders. And I swear they wore uh, GI issue combat boots. It sure looked like the same ones I had on my feet or in my arms at that point. Was a deal made? Perhaps a transfer of technology in exchange of maintaining the alien abductions under wraps. There sure seems to be an old guard ridiculing the subject and pushing back on disclosure. Some might be CIA plans, others simply set in their ways. Best thing, just drag the alien into town square. You can, you can film that and stream it to the internet while it's happening, in case they snatch it from you. And we have plenty of patients and plenty of people that have quite strange and false ideas about themselves. For example, feeling that they're a woman when they're a man, or feeling they're fat when they're as thin as a rake. Uh, we have all kinds of people like that. But the wind is certainly changing at the highest level, pointing to an obvious divide inside the government. Uh, there are, uh, there's footage and records of objects in the skies that we don't know exactly what they are. We can't explain uh, how they moved, their trajectory. Uh, they, they did not have um, an easily explainable pattern. Uh, there are phenomena out there that uh, those Navy pilots know that they saw something. You've seen it on TV. Mm -hmm. And so what I decided was, well, we ought to look at this from a scientific point of view, not from a military point of view. Nobody has to agree that why it's there, but shouldn't we at least be spending some money to study all these phenomenon? Shouldn't we study this stuff? The answer is yes, and that's all this was about, and why the federal government all these years has covered up put brake pads on everything, stopped it. I interviewed Gordon Cooper, uh, Mercury astronaut Gordon Cooper back in the 90s. Cooper said on camera that there was a landed UFO at circa 1957 at Edwards Air Force Base. His camera crew captured the filming of this object and he uh, presented this to the higher ups and eventually a courier jet came in from Washington. He handed the footage over, which was good. He viewed it. That's the last he saw of it. Exactly. Did you know where that footage went of the flying saucer that landed on the tarmac? Went, went to Washington. That's all that I know. Are you saying that there's some there's some evidence that uh, still hasn't seen the light of day? I'm saying most of it hasn't seen the light of day. We need extraordinary evidence and then step on the grass and not allow it to grow, which is currently the case. We need extraordinary evidence, but anyone that mentions this possibility is ridiculed by some uh, blogger that doesn't even write a single paper in a decade. That makes no sense whatsoever. This blogger should first practice science. Well, some no, of us do. No, no, let me finish. How, how do there people that? make statements about scientists that explore these possibilities within the scientific method? That's the acidic culture that I'm talking about. There is an acidic culture that suppresses innovation in the current culture of science. There is physical evidence, okay? There is the, the lesions on people's bodies, like Dave is describing. There is the burned earth. Many cases that have been documented. You can just deny it, but there's, Linda, how many? What evidence would you offer a layman who might be watching? The, the evidence is a combination of the clinical evidence of people of sound mind describing the presence of beings who come to them and they have nothing to gain and it is described altogether as real. Sadly, Dr. John Mack was killed by a drunk driver in 2004. I can't stress enough how his work paved the way forward. Without his interviews with the kids in Zimbabwe, I would still be going back and forth on the validity of the abduction phenomenon. Before I conclude this video, I want to make clear that I don't think the aliens are evil. Think about it. Does anyone love your pet more than you do? Yet, to them, 
Some of our doings would seem exactly like abductions. Maybe if we can fix some of our own behavior, we wouldn't need rescuing. Perhaps that would be our species growing up. Just a thought. If you want to support the channel, simply like, comment, or share. I appreciate you passing by.